once a faithful cowboy. This faithful cowboy lost his favorite Bible while mending fences out on the range. Three weeks later, a sheep walks up to him, carrying the Bible in its mouth. The cowboy can hardly believe his eyes, as you can imagine, and he takes the much-loved book out of the sheep's mouth, raises his eyes heavenward, and explains, it's a miracle. Not really, said the sheep. <laughs> Your name is written inside. <laughs> The cowboy says it's a miracle that his Bible has been returned, but anybody could have returned that book because his name was inside the cover. The miracle in this example is the talking sheep. Nobody expects a talking sheep, yet the cowboy does not recognize the bigger miracle. The point is not always the miracle but the one who performed the miracle. And today we hear again one of Jesus's I am statements. Depending on how one counts these I am statements in John's gospel, I am the bread of life is the fifth I am statement, but it won't be the last. In speaking with the Samaritan woman at the well, when she says to Jesus, I know that the Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. What does Jesus say to her but, I am. I am he, the one who is speaking to you. And a little while later, Jesus explains to his disciples, metaphorically, that he has food that they don't know about. When the disciples don't seem to get that metaphor, Jesus explains further, I am. I am fed by doing the will of the one who sent me and by completing his work. Then on the day that Jesus heals the crippled man by the healing pool in Jerusalem, Jesus, when confronted by the temple leaders, replies to them, my father is still working and I am. Am. I am working also. Last Sunday, when the disciples are in the boat at night in the midst of a storm, they are afraid, we heard. Jesus identifies himself in the Greek that our Bible translations come from, the Greek words ego eimi. For ego eimi to make sense in English translations, it is often translated as, it is I. The words he speaks when walking on the water. But ego et imi literally means, I am. I am. Do not be afraid. And speaking metaphorically once more today, we hear, I am. I am the bread of life. Notice how on each of these occasions, Jesus is giving something of himself. I am implies unity with God. Recall that when Moses encounters God calling to him from the burning bush, what does God say to Moses but, I am what I am. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. In Hebrew, this statement, I am, is more fully understood as, I will be what I will be. This is a statement of God's self-giving. I am is a statement of covenant between God and God's people. The way that God covenants is different than the way that we tend toward our human covenants. When we humans covenant, we give something, but when we give something, something gets spent. This is different with God. When God gives, God does not spend, God gains. In short, God's covenant is this, I will be what I will be, so that you may all be 
who you are made to be. So when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty, this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that has been given me, but raise it up the last day. And continuing a bit beyond today's gospel to make this point, that Jesus is demonstrating that his will is in line with God's will. I am, though, is about more than participation. I am is about God's indwelling. Like I said earlier, when God gives, God gains. Jesus offers himself to us willingly as God's indwelling. This is because for us, Christ is the key to God's new covenant with us through him. We often say how God becomes incarnate through Christ. The incarnation shows us how human relations are to be reformed in the image of the Trinity. So writes Catherine Towner in her book, Christ the Key. Jesus's unusual ways of relating to us have everything to do with God, the Creator, and the Holy Spirit. In Christ, we find growth and relationship that is between divinity and our humanity. This relationship points to the intersection of the mission of God. Often, that mission is referred to as misio dei. Misio dei has always been at work, the mission of God. But it is Christ that helps us to connect the dots to God's mission. When Christ connects those dots, we find us and God at an intersection. As creatures created in God's image, imago dei. At this intersection, the mission of God and our createdness and in God's image meets. The Incarnation sets up a relationship between divinity and humanity, yes. This is the true nature of the relationship between the mission of God and the image of God. Every time Jesus says, I am, notice that he is implying also who he is not. Interactions with Jesus have a healing nature, never a destructive one. When there is destruction, it is because there is no interaction. There is no meeting at the intersection of God's mission and God's image that we are created as. Also notice that when Jesus says, I am, there is the acceptance of sinners as Jesus' closest friends. It is another mark of Jesus' being when Jesus says, I am, I am accepting of you when you accept me, he seems to say, regardless of who you are or what others think that you are, I know who you are. You, we, are created in God's image. Christ accepts us as such. With every I am statement, Jesus practices radical inclusion around God's table. It seems then that the bigger miracle is not the feeding of a lot of people, as we heard last week, or also last week, the calming of storms or the walking on water. The bigger miracle is the nature of the one who performs the miracle, the one who comes as I am, so that we can more fully know that we are created in God's image and that we may have the courage to reflect that image. The bigger miracle is the revelation of God, our creator, as revealed incarnationally through Christ Jesus. This is the one who says, I will be all that you will be so that you may be all that I created you to be. I am. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, 
and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. In the name of God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.